We're coming to our last two sessions of this conference. And as we do so, I would just like to thank you all um, for your generosity in the way in which you have participated in this conference. Uh, it has been really heartwarming. I'd also like to say that as we think about all the trials and tribulations that our countries are facing at the moment, um, both in South Africa um, and abroad, um, that this event has been such a heartwarming event. Um, the enthusiasm, the passion, the commitment. The world is made up of very good people as well as very scandalous people. It now comes to the point that we will hear from the Kresge Foundation and we are so delighted that Rip Rapson, the president of the Kresge Foundation, um, has come uh, to participate with us and is going to present to us. As, you have been, as has been made clearly throughout the conference, the Kresge Foundation has been a fundamental part of Sia Pomalera. But it also comes from a long history in the country um, for a long time, the, uh, the Kresge Foundation supported buildings in South Africa, including the UCT Library, the one that burned down and is being reconstructed, but also the Donald Gordon um, building, I think that's correct. The, uh, the Life Sciences, yes, mm. at UWC and many others, and then led a, um, a, pro a, a project and funded it called Inyatelo, um, which has been fundamental in assisting institutions to think that they can and are able to and have fundraised enormous amounts of money. So the Kresge Foundation is not only about Sia Pumalela, but other vital aspects of South Africa's higher education. Uh, Rip, we look forward to, to hearing from you. We know about your deep passion for this kind of work and the work that you have done in Detroit. So we look forward. stay to the bitter end. I thought the conference ended a half an hour ago, but uh, here we are. Um, I have um, four quick thank yous, but they are uh, nevertheless uh, heartfelt. Um, first is to Sadie and Alan and Jenny for not just being extraordinary leaders of, of Sadie, but pulling off a conference like this. I mean, think of the complexity of all that has gone into these last three days, and they've done it just flawlessly, from the materials to the sequencing to the presenters. I, I just can't imagine it being done any better. Um, second is to thank all of you. You've, um, as I will talk about at length, um, been extraordinary in sharing your experiences, your passions, and your optimism for the future. Uh, it's a huge amount of time to take from your working day, and. We deeply appreciate it. Um, third, I want to thank our New Zealand delegation. It's so wonderful to have student success spread this way across the globe, as we've talked about. And fourth, um, forgive me for this, but I really want to thank my own team at Kresge. Um, Ashley Johnson, many of you have met, is, is new to South Africa, and I think she uh, will never be the same. And this has been a profound experience for her to not only attend the conference, but to see parts of South Africa. Um, uh, not enough parts, but parts nevertheless. Um, back at home, our home shop, we have uh, a woman named Wendy who has sort of helped choreograph our part of this, but mostly I want to thank Bill. Uh, there is really, and I don't need to tell most of you in the room this, no more passionate, committed, uh, advocate for all things South Africa and Bill. It goes way back to the Sullivan uh, principal days when Bill was working hard to uh, end apartheid and he has never let up for one moment. There is just simply no way that the Kresge Foundation would be engaged in this work uh, without Bill. And so I just want to personally thank him for all of his work. So everything that has that could be said about the extraordinary progress you have made, it has been said, and it's been said far more eloquently than I can. 
The highly distinctive yet deeply effective bodies of work of each of your institutions, the emergence of strategies of collaboration and shared learning that were unimaginable when we began this journey eight years ago, the uptake of data-informed practices, and so much more. It's absolutely breathtaking and inspiring, and I hope for all of you profoundly promising. So, because I really can't offer anything beyond what your remarkable sessions have revealed, I've got two choices, it seems to me. First, to thank you for the honor, honor of experiencing such powerful work and then just sit down. Uh, or second, to say a few words about what it's like for an American in my position to return to South Africa for the first time in five years. I really am tempted to do the first option. Thank you, <laughs> sit down. Um, but our friends from Sadie were really clear that that would be entirely unacceptable. <laughs> um, and I need to stand up here and try the second, so I will. So, being removed from Johannesburg for these five years has necessitated watching from afar a series of events that call into question what makes cities great, vibrant, and beacons of opportunity. Events that ask whether cities really are and can be the soul of the nation, the driver of progress, the cauldron of innovation. The question crystallizes in my mind images of a once great, prosperous, and commanding city seeming to collapse of its own weight. A city pockmarked with huge swaths of blighted land, a city seemingly incapable of stemming violent, destabilizing, even terrifying crime. A city brought to its knees by public and private corruption. A city whose mayors come and go with alarming frequency. A city whose street lights don't work, whose potholes aren't paved, whose sidewalks heave, and whose buildings stand abandoned. It's an image of a city once a magnet for workers from all over the world turned inside out as industries fling for the suburbs or shuttering their doors in bankruptcy. It's finances on a knife's edge of collapse. It's image the subject of ridicule in the international press. It's, it's dreadful, it's depressing, and it's all too real. But before you take a front at what I've just said, let me assure you that the city in my mind's eye is not Johannesburg, not Johannesburg, but my own hometown of Detroit. Because that dystopian portrait I just painted was exactly what was being painted five, 15 years ago. Indeed, one of America's leading publications posed the question on its cover, Will the last person to leave Detroit please turn out the lights? The question wasn't without basis. Indeed, a decade ago, Detroit filed for the largest municipal bankruptcy in the history of the United States. It was joined in that journey by bankruptcies of our pillar automotive industries, Chrysler, General Motors, Ford, and hundreds of large and small corporations up and down the automobile supply chain. I fully understand that there are those who would use similar brushstrokes to depict the situation in Johannesburg today. Indeed, I was completely frustrated to read two weeks ago an article in London's Financial Times that did exactly that. I have absolutely no intention of reinforcing that kind of sensational negativism. It is instead to convey that I believe that we in America, we in Detroit, know just how difficult things can be whether measured on the scale of political dysfunction, economic disinvestment, neglected infrastructure, or unmet social needs. And yet, a decade later, Detroit has reestablished its financial equilibrium, recalibrated its political machinery, and reimagined its economic and social future. By virtually any measure, Detroit is succeeding. Its downtown residential and commercial activity is booming. Its neighborhoods are stabilizing, anchored by well-maintained parks and recreation centers, improved early childhood centers and schools, and newly vibrant commercial quarters. Its private sector has a renewed confidence in the viability of market investments. Its automobile sector is poised to catapult into the electronic vehicle era. Its public sector has cleansed the cor corrosion of corruption and has become a model of competent, results-oriented governance. Detroit refused to turn off its lights, choosing instead to illuminate a very different future. And indeed, in an astounding turnaround, Time Magazine just a couple of weeks, or no, I guess it was last year, last year, 
um, declared Detroit one of the world's great places to visit. But all that good news doesn't mean that Detroit has cracked the code once and for all, for it certainly has not. There's a noted urbanist named Richard Florida who wrote something called The Rise of the Creative Class many years ago and talked about the vitality of urban centers. He and I were recently in a conversation in which he told me and advised me that as spectacular as, as Detroit's revitalization has been, there were still too many drivers of long-term vitality that remained unattended to and underdeveloped. Low wages and unemployment in the neighborhoods, low rates of wealth formation among people of color, enduring racial health disparities, and many, many others. But Florida then went on to say to me that a particular piece of unfinished business, not just in Detroit, but in cities across our country, is education. He argued that our educational institutions have not only to innovate, but also to align more fully and effectively between high schools and post-secondary institutions, between community colleges and universities, among higher education, industry, government, and communities. So that brings me back to South Africa, Siapumalela, and the power of the work that has been on display during this conference. You are unquestionably and regrettably in a really tough spot. Load shedding, degradation of infrastructure, political malaise, and on and on. As I've spoken with people over meals and in the hallways, it's hard not to take in the expressions of deep pessimism at best and hardening cynicism at worst. That malaise is in stark contrast to my previous trips here, when there was a profound optimism about the possibilities of your still extraordinarily young democracy. It was tempered by realism, to be sure, but it was palpable and it was inspiring. So, a couple of observations for what they're worth. First, you are far, far from being alone in your alienation from elected officials, in your loss of faith in the bedrock institutions of democracy, in your sense of erosion of a sense of shared purpose and common good. On each of those fronts, the United States ship of state is at the moment entirely shameful. We are utterly consumed by a partisan divide, ever more intractably separated by race and economic class, incomprehensibly incapable of housing our homeless feeding our hungry, educating our most disadvantaged, inexcusably dragging our feet in the face of rising oceans, overheating cities, and cascading waves of fire and violent storms. Now, not that that is any real consolation, I know, but shadows are falling well beyond South African borders. Second, Detroit's experience has told us that turnarounds of the most unimaginable kind are possible and permit me to stretch the argument a bit. A reversal of fortune may well just start, may well start just when the situation appears most bleak, and perhaps because the situation is bleak, because that bleakness resets the preconditions of resolve, of reimagination, of renewal. And third, perhaps combining the first two, South Africa has been through worse during the entire history of apartheid, to be sure, but also in the mid-70s, and as well in the decade between 1985 and 1995, when the country appeared at risk of collapsing into civil war. You built out of those horrific conditions your inspirational rainbow democracy. Today, you have so very much more on which and with which to build. One of those building blocks is why we've gathered over the last three days to celebrate increasing the success of students in your post-secondary system. You know, about 10 years ago, one of the Kresge trustees, a guy named Phil Clay, and I sat down over dinner in Cape Town with a dozen vice chancellors. We wanted to explore whether we might enter a new body of work together, following our very successful investments that Jenny mentioned in promoting advancement training at a handful of universities. The vice chancellors were unanimous in urging us to take on student success. The vice chancellors made the case that you all know so very well that universities, while well, having opened up after the end of apartheid, were still seeing student success rates that were unacceptably low. So Phil and I listened very carefully, asked a lot of questions, and came away persuaded. 
We brought the pr proposition back to Bill, who went to work building a response. And through his and your magic, Sia Pumalala was born. For Kresge, this new initiative had the enormous advantage of running parallel to student success efforts in the states. A group of reformers at American community colleges, led by Achieving the Dream, had been experimenting with student-focused, student-focused, data-driven approaches to addressing our own troubling graduation and throughput rates. Carol described it so well this morning. You know the rest of the history as well as I. Working with Sadie and the first five Kresge grantees, which were Fitz, Nelson Mandela University, University of the Free State, Durban University of Technology, and the University of Pretoria, you borrowed from cutting-edge approaches in the US while designing innovative, bold, and effective approaches tailored to the unique needs and capacity of this country's students and institutions. We've heard over the last couple of days that there is no paucity of challenges yet to overcome, but the progress is real, expanding by the year. We heard example after example after example. You are hurtling forward at a speed inconceivable eight years ago. I would say, no, even inconceivable five years ago. That is why so much of the tone over the last days has been one of celebration. Not of a mission fully accomplished, but of a promise coming into ever sharper focus. It's been a profound honor and privilege to be here to join in that celebration with you. So the question is how we, meaning Kresge, can continue to be of help to you. Let me suggest four ways. First, we will continue to see Pumalaya and its basic structures over the next three years. Sadie will remain the network's backbone, and IIE, Achieving the Dream, and Saldru will be key service delivery, technical assistance, convening, and research partners. Second, we'll ask that all the grantees use common tools, share data, and support national approaches. Third, we will expand the number of universities by issuing a call for proposals later this year, encouraging current, past, and future grantees to apply for support. Now, the details are still being worked out. We'll talk a little bit about that. But we anticipate making grants in the 1 million to 2 million rand range per institution for up to 20 recipients. And we hope the Department of Higher Education and Training and perhaps other private donors will be able to continue to support Sia Pumilala as well. Fourth, we're gonna more actively explore whether we can strengthen ways that universities can support their cities beyond producing more degrees. Now, Carol previewed how this is beginning to play out in the United States just a bit. So let me pick on Vitz as a hypothetical case in this country, realizing that any number of your universities could be substituted in. On one hand, Vitz drives the economic, social, and political environment of Johannesburg, the Bhutan province, and the country as a whole by producing graduates in every conceivable field. On the other hand, Vitz is also an employer. It's an investor in land. It's a purchaser of goods and services. It's a generator of community activities. It's an engine of socially applied research and it could even be a provider of renewable energy beyond its own needs. All of these functions are, and can increasingly become, ingredients for advancing community development and stability, increasing community safety, nurturing stronger pipelines from high schools to university, supporting the economic futures of people and businesses in the Bromfontein community. We propose working with a handful of universities to explore how this might play out in this country. We'd also propose on drawing on our Sia Pumalela playbook by encouraging the nation's universities to compare notes both with one another and with analogous efforts in the United States. And as with Sia Pumalela, more conversation and clarity will be forthcoming. So I was, I must admit, somewhat uncertain about what I might find in South Africa on this visit. Five years is a long time between trips, and a great deal has been injected into your civic calculus. But the people in this room are demonstrating a resoluteness of purpose, a reservoir of resilience, and an embrace of courageous creativity that make absolutely clear that your work is becoming stronger by the day. And that is notwithstanding all that has conspired to tempt you to lose perspective 
whether it's COVID, electrical shortages, or the kind of political shenanigans your country seems particularly good at cooking up. <laughs> Let me just say that people throughout the conference have been exceedingly kind about the role Kresge has played in all of this. Indeed, we ardently hope that we have been a good partner to you. But the reality is that all this work rests on your shoulders, not on ours. You are on the ground every day fighting to make the lives of your students more enriching, more equitable, more hopeful. Your work is heroic, heroic. And so I leave South Africa not pessimistic or cynical, but uplifted and inspired. You are changing this country. You have our deepest admiration and thanks. Well, thank you, Rip. That was a great uh, speech, and it's really uh, terrific. Uh, I just have to say, this has been a great meeting, and uh, you know, Jenny said on Wednesday that uh, that this CMPMA conference would be better for Fakhti, beyond expectations, and I think she was absolutely right. And I think, you know, I just want to give a round of applause to Sadie and all the work that they've been doing over the last several days. <laughs> Four years of Zoom calls. It was nice to be able to talk to Victoria at 8, New York at 10, and Los Angeles at 3. It's been wonderful to see all of you in person and just amazing to see all the progress you've made. You know, we started the conference with Murray's trenchant analysis of inequality in South Africa and how it parallels and differs from other countries. In fact, uh, arguably has now you know, beaten Brazil um, in, in a not very uh, wonderful way. Um, we've learned about the, the great way that partners and participants have really moved the needle on student success or institutional reform at the, their institution. We've learned how to listen to student voice and learned about how student voice has been incorporated into the work that you do. And we've seen how regional Siapula conferences or Siapula uh, regional associations and networks have strengthened whole areas so that multiple universities are working in concert with each other. And perhaps most importantly, we've seen real results from these activities. You know, Francois Strader of Edistema at UFS has shown how building uh, Sariti can dramatically improve student outcomes and build equitable opportunities for all. So, you know, when I think about sort of the quixotic element of this, you know, let's try to improve student success in South Africa. Well, good luck with that. And we've shown that, in fact, a lot of luck was there, but a lot of hard work was there. And that's really what brought this home. And as Carol has reminded us, one of the remarkable things about the student success movement is how equity and evidence-based approach allows adaptations to differing cultures and contexts. So that the, the idea, that let's look at equity, let's look at data, let's figure out what really works. But you can do that in lots of different places in different ways, but those basic building blocks work, at least as far as we can tell, in at least three countries. Um, and so if we can really leverage, uh, and Tim has reminded us how we can see, uh, you, we can use education's own strengths and weaknesses to leverage change. If we can leverage student success to increase revenues or increase an institution's reputation, we can build real reform. And perhaps most importantly, this work can bring real joy, not just to the students we serve, but to each of us. Last night's the celebration of uh, Natava Singh and her leadership reminds me that we what we started a dozen years ago with the hope that South Africa could build student success movement to address some of the most intractable legacies of apartheid. After hearing about all of this work you're all doing, it's clear we have, to borrow a phrase from Margaret Mead, we've learned this week that we have proved that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, that's the only thing that ever has. Toward that end, I'd like to share with this group of committed citizens and dedicated people some additional details of what we hope to do in Sia Pumalala. It's a work in progress, including whatever we heard just a few minutes ago, um, uh, but we're focused on institutional reform, 
to expand student attainment and improve social and economic mobility. This, in turn, we believe will uplift communities. So here are 10 things you can expect to see. First, we're going to be expanding CFMLA to up to 20 partner grantees, as we've mentioned. Second, we'll continue with the current services and regional and national networks, although we'll take this opportunity to edit and update things to better address gaps in current needs. Third, we'll reconstitute the CFMLA Advisory Committee, which includes SAFE, SALJU, USAF, NISFAS, DHEP, CHE, and other representatives. But I should say, it does not include Kresge. It is what you are doing in your country to improve student success. Fourth, we'll continue to see relationship with Saldru and the CEO Pambili research support on the importance of higher education to South Africa's economy and individual social mobility. I hope you'll visit, by the way, Saldru's CEO Pambili website. You can sort of see the progress that's been going on and the hard work that Nicola and her team have done. Fifth, we'll update the coaching model using suggestions made by our coaches yesterday. Six, we'll double down on high impact modules that impede student success. Seven, we'll identify ways to enhance data and data analytics capacity, staffing, and literacy. We want to make sure there are enough people on your campuses to actually collect that, as we heard earlier from UKZ, mine that data, analyze that data, present that data visually, and act on that data. Eighth, we'll support the long term continuation of the mutually beneficial relationship with achieving the dream, of course. Ninth, we'll support grantees to fully use university capacity development grants and to align their work with those UCDs. And finally, we'll ensure that the student voice is loud and clear in all the work we do. In addition to enhancing and updating and enlarging CIA Pumalela, we'll also continue to require grantees to do some things. One, establish diverse and representative student success committees. Two, focus on priority modules high priority modules that impede student success. Three, report student success data using standardized and regular metrics. Four, collaborate and share findings and data with other network members. Five, align with and use those UCD grants. We know that oftentimes those grants go uh, unused. We wanna make sure you're fully using them as much as you can. Six, use the South African survey of student success and of course, fully participate in the Sia Pumalola network. As for timing, we hope to incorporate what we're, we've been hearing, get that all digested, and then uh, announce an RFP at some time in the next couple of months, and then have decisions about a new cohort of grantees no later, we hope, than January 24, making initial payments by the first quarter of 24. Based on comments we've heard over the past few days, we'll work with Sadie to review some other possible changes. And again, um, tell us what you're thinking. We want to know. It just may not be able to fit it in before the end of the conference. I'd like to thank all of you for the work you do every day, often in challenging conditions, to improve student success on your campuses. I'd also like to thank everyone at Sadie, including Nambalela, Moses, Ashton, Luiso, Mariella, and of course, Alan and Jim. I'd also like Carol to thank Carol and Tim for crossing two oceans to join us, and for leadership they're showing the global student success movement and in their own countries. In particular, I want to thank Carol for the vision, hard work, and partnership she has shown in both the United States and here on this continent for many, many years. She has been an important friend to our work domestically and internationally. And indeed, um, she tells me how. Um, I'd like to thank Ashley for coming all this way from Detroit, despite all kinds of travel mishaps. This has been, as Rick mentioned, her first trip to South Africa, and she has so admired your creativity, opportunities, and commitment to social justice. She tells me how your country has inspired her, and as I know, it has inspired Rip and me. Indeed, I'd also like to thank Rip for his stalwart and support of our post-secondary access and success efforts, which, as Carol mentioned, have really had an impact over the past two decades. In addition, I can't thank Rip enough for his support of our South Africa work and our grant making since you arrived 17 years ago this month in 2006. If you've been to our web, and at first, I, if we could give him a, a round of applause. Yeah. If you've been to our web page, you might say, well, it says Kresge supports opportunities in America's cities. And uh, in case you hadn't checked, 
South Africa is not an American city. Um, but since as early as the days of Kresge, Rip has recognized that your parallel history and struggles echo and inspire our domestic work and our equity goals. Sia Pumala has been successful, but we're like someone fording a stream that has not yet finished, recognizes your success and the work that still remains left to be done and champions our South Africa work with my colleagues and, and, and the staff at Kresge and with our trustees. Change doesn't happen overnight, and his consistent support has been critical to our success at Sia Pumala. Finally, as we have already heard, we Americans who believe in social justice are very disappointed today. As many of you have already heard, yesterday the U.S. Supreme Court decided to end decades of affirmative action policies in university admissions. Alas, our court is not as thoughtful as the one you have in Johannesburg. Affirmative action policies have helped to reshape American higher education from the domain of a few to the point that more than half of all Americans now have a post-secondary credential. The problem, of course, is that post-secondary attainment is not equally distributed in our country, and communities of color typically have much lower rates of success, often attributable, more, more than just often, almost universally attributable, to centuries of systematic racial oppression from government and private entities. We regret the majority of an often dubiously ethical Supreme Court willfully ignores this fact. Yet as disappointed as we are with this decision, being with all of you reminds us that this is no time to give up. I often end a CFMLA conference with a quote from Nelson Mandela or you know, the Freedom Charter or something like that, but today I'd like to quote an American, uh, Martin Luther King. We shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And all of you know that uh, better, frankly, than most Americans. The Kresge Foundation will have existed for 100 years in 2024, and we are not going away or abandoning our values and commitment to serve humanity. I know that the work we are doing, expanding educational opportunity, can and will overcome centuries of racism and oppression and build real social mobility in both South Africa and the United States. And I can't thank all of you enough for the work you do every day to strive to make this true. As Carol said, it's not over. And I know we're all on this journey together. Thank you. Our very last session, we are nearly caught up on the time that we had. Um, so I want to um, hand over to Alan, who's, <laughs> who's going to uh, begin to tell us how we are seeing the kinds of vision that we have discussed with the Kresge Foundation and that has been uh, described by Bill in, in some details about what some of the components of that work would be. Um, and just to have a look at what the components of the Siapumalela network might look like. 
We've obviously not had time uh, to incorporate all of the aspects that were discussed this morning, but we'll be doing so over the next while, um, and also as we develop our plans to be engaging with our partners. There are some new components that don't really fit so well into what we've had before, um, and the one is the scholarship of student success, and I think that requires a different kind of network from anything that we've got at the moment. Obviously would need to be cross-institutional, but it's rather different from the networks that are in place at the moment. And the other big challenge is, are we in a position to move forward into postgraduate work, which um, obviously has many similarities with undergraduate work, but is in all sorts of ways very different. So, Alan. Thank you, Jenny. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, trying to put into the way in which we think about ways to go to the future. This is not written in anything but sand, so it can change. But what is more important for you to do while we're doing this is to finish the evaluation for us. <laughs> so we thought that instead of you sending you things by email, you'll get it by email as well, um, but you can kick, take your phone, click on the uh, QR code and get the thing. And so while we're talking, you can answer the few questions that we have there and it's all done. And we'll get a very good return on investment this way. I will leave it up just for a moment for you to take the QR code. There is also a um, O at the bottom if you wish to use that. So the first one, there's no more going to be um, the uh, thing. We are going to try and give funding to everybody, all 20 institutions. Of course, this means that uh, you will all have to abide by some rules that Bill has highlighted. And that's the important part, especially giving us back your data so that we can understand the system much better. The next one is we're going to remove all the names of partners, associates and participants. You're all going to be partners. Even if you haven't been in the network before, you will be a partner. So that we have, although the partners and the participants and the associates all receive the same processes, the only difference was that the partners had some money. So now everybody's going to have some money. And as Bill uh, has said, we're, we're going to try and expand the, the network. So think about those institutions that you want to chivy along or you would like to have in the thing and help us get to that done. So that's the first part. The next bit is the coaches. We have a nice panel with coaches, so you heard quite a lot 
about what they did and how they did it. So they will continue the online site visits and we have to decide how we're going to do this because if we have 20 uh, institutions, do, does every institution need to have a coach to tell you how to do your student success committee? If you have a very successful process already, maybe that's not necessary. But might what be necessary is some of the other things that they need to do is say about implement student success work. And this might include uh, things like professional development done purposefully um, uh, with members um, in your institution or having to work with the uh, um, University Capacity Development Grant to help the institutions uh, plan and capture data while they are doing their uh, work that they said they were going to do for the higher education uh, um, department. So we now come to the third part and, and this is the, the services. And this is two parts to it, the workshops and the work streams. The workshops, have been, we think, have, have been extremely important because it's allowed so many more people because we went so virtually to attend. But there are some issues that we need to think about this. One of the things that we've not really spoken about and not really uh, thought until now, we are going to include professional development for academics and for learning of young, uh, for, especially for young academics, but also develop uh, processes where they might become more data-centric uh, in their thinking. So we're going to add a fourth dimension to the services. Remember, you saw the three um, uh, previously with uh, when the services were spoken about. So we will now add this into the system. We will really need to look very carefully at the high impact practices. Um, we know that everybody ha has these courses that uh, cause pandemonium in people's lives because they don't get through them for three years and then they leave or whatever. We need to solve this problem and we need to solve it with data. So we're going to focus quite a lot on that. And so we also want to know that the knowing, the doing, and the transforming of data. How does data transform your institution into a student successful endeavor? And not a, anything else. And then if we want to think about how we can do collaborative grants between institutions to do um, uh, look for ways in which to do things. And Sadie is very interested in working with people. We have had that experience with the national database, and um, that was a, been a very good example of Sadie working with them. But we also want you, with different partners, to do the same thing, not just for your own institutions, but can you think of maybe working with another institution to do something for student success and there are also, the, the, the grant is also about um, capacitating the lecturers and so that is also another part of what we wanted to do. In the work streams, um, we do need the National Student Database to be done. I think we are trying to solve that problem and I think it's getting solved. Um, we need to uh, convert the work streams into um, uh, services. We need to understand the gaps between male and female achievement. And so these are the parts that the services will, check, will include. So it's not a really a big change though, but it's uh, I, I'm taking information into another position and adding additional things like how do we help academics navigate through the minefield of data and teaching and learning when they have had not much experience in data. I will now hand over to Jane. Thank you. Um, 
next year we'll have another part of our platform. <laughs> I think it's one was that only one person fell off in the course of this event. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about networks and now we want to strengthen the national network. One of the ways of doing that, and we take note of some of the comments that were made this morning about the digital world and making sure that all the digital information that we have uh, is on this vibrant website as well as the newsletters and that things can be found easily on it. We also need to rethink convenings, and I must say this is puzzling me. Um, 20 partners, how do we have the convenings? We have had it that everybody's doing the presentation and then we talk, clearly that won't work amongst 20 people, so we will have to think of different ways of, of doing that. Um, and we want as well, some of the partners will know that they've had to have very onerous reports, that produce very onerous reports. We at Sadie have had to review those reports. I think it's been quite a difficult task, so we want to uh, replace that onerous reporting, but agree on ways of measuring our achievements. Um, and when we're thinking about measuring those achievements, we have taken note um, of the emphasis not only on, on racial differences of male and female, but also on race. And some of that has already been done by looking at quintile one, two, and three um, students and analyzing those, and um, we want to take that to a next level. And then we need to explore different ways of sharing learnings, and this can be one way in which this would link to um, what we've spoken about is the scholarship of student success. So we start to embed that and develop that um, uh, scholarship and that would be a way as well of, of sharing learnings. And then we were hoping that we might have a student success project in each of the five regions so that we could take the regional networks which have started to be quite vibrant spaces uh, to the next level of possibly actively doing something together. Um, and I understood today that we were almost getting an invitation from the Department of Higher Education and Training to develop collaborative university collaborative development grants. Um, and they're encouraging that collaboration much more than they did in previous years. Um, and then <clears throat> finally trying to allocate more funds to, to this component that ties up uh, with obviously needing funds to do some of those student pro uh, success projects in the regions. So you see there's a tick now and it's slightly differently written. And now move on to the final one, which is the advisory committee. And we do think this is a really vital part of Sia Pumalela, is making sure we have, we have no statutory power in the way Tim has. It would have been very nice to have that kind of statutory power. We have to fit in um, to a range of other players who have that kind of power and work alongside and try and, put in, try and ensure that the things that they are asking to be uh, happening are happening in the most de developmental and inclusive way. Um, so, unfortunately, many of the people have moved on in different areas. So, we have two members of NISFAS here, um, and that will be now establishing our contact with NISFAS, and they'd be part of that committee. Um, DHET as well. Um, we were hoping that two of the DTEP people would be with us for supper, including from the, from the Tibet sector, by the way. Unfortunately, they had a meeting with uh, the minister that went on and on and on, and so they were uh, unable to, to get here. Similarly, USAC is under new leadership, although we have very good links uh, with the helm part of USAC. Um, with the CHE, in this case, it's lucky the person who was in DHEAD and really pushed student success hard. Um, one of, uh, especially after the visit and on achieving the dream, um, but he has moved to the CHE, so that's a, an easy um, way in which to strengthen that advisory committee. 
and there are other experts who are working in the field that we wish to uh, be including. For example, are there a number of non-profit organizations who are giving support to um, uh, scholarships to students but are also supporting them enormously and this would be a way of then linking in to the wider, um, the wider debate rather than operating on their own. So we look forward to that reconstitution um, as, we, as we move forward. So there's a lot of work for us to do and we are going to be having to prioritize. Uh, you, will have to, you will be hearing from us in the course of this while about some of the draft ideas because we are wanting to move as fast as possible so that we don't have a hiatus. Um, so this is the work between July, which is tomorrow, <laughs> and the um, beginning of, of December, um, so that uh, a decision can be made, so that you know about what planning is possible for, for next year. One thing I did just uh, forget to mention, and I think it's something that we'll strengthen a lot in some of our services, um, there was a lot of mention about nurturing staff, and that I think somebody put it really very well, um, they are burnt out and exhausted because Siapomalela, people involved in Siapomalela played a huge part um, in overcoming the trials and tribulations of COVID. Um, and somehow or other we need to nurture and expand uh, the people who are working um, towards this goal of, of student success. So with that I'd like to hand back to Alan and but on the other hand, to say to all of you, please cooperate with us as we get these plans together. So now it is my pleasure to um, say to you, it has been wonderful to see you all here, and um, it is great that we can have these wonderful interactions. And I'm sorry, I haven't had enough interactions with everyone, but that's just the, my problem with uh, having to be around and to keep you all happy with my team. But so the first thing I want to say is to give yourselves a round of applause, because without you, this would never happen. Secondly, I want to thank the Presley organization for everything that you've done for us, the support, and, and uh, might I say that Bill is one of the most uh, treasured partners in funding because he is with us all the time. He doesn't just come at some times like some organizations do. He is with us all the time. So I want to say thank you very much. And then I need to say thank you very much to the staff uh, who work with us uh, to put this thing. So, Ashton, would you like to stand? Thank you.
And my final thanks is to the people who helped us here, the, the In the Wanderers, and the people at the back who did all the technology, and our photographers. Thank you very much. to the thank yous, uh, but before I do that, I want to say something special. There were some new things in this conference. First of all, from our email man, I hope you enjoyed that you got an update and a message every single day about what had happened the previous day and what had happened the new day. So, yes, thank you. It's very hard to do that. Thank you. And then, in terms of our social time, um, we've had cocktail parties before. They've been of a rather different nature. And so to the new addition to the Sadie team, Louisa, thank you for organizing and being the master of the ceremony. And if you didn't know it, the playlist was actually constructed by our IT specialist, a new talent we didn't know he had. <laughs> wonderful set of ideas to put together the conference, the construction of the conference. Uh, I think it really worked very well indeed. And thank you all. Travel well.